Good morning everybody. It's six o'clock in the morning in Kyiv and we're about to now go on a little mini convoy into the east of Ukraine. We've got four trucks to take with us. We're going to end up in the Donbass delivering this to a very special guy and doing an interview. Hello everybody, it's Alex from Help 99 Ukraine, 69 Sniffing Brigade. I'm now here in Eastern Ukraine delivering this truck here to this gentleman. Um, if we could just start this short interview, if you could just introduce yourself to everyone. Hi to everybody. I am uh, deputy commander, one of our troops. Uh, and uh, want to say thank you for all uh, who people who uh, was, uh, uh, who took part in uh, this volunteers job and help us this this uh, to take this uh, car thank you thank you and i think i think this is the first time that we've interviewed someone of of your rank though as well right if i'm right in saying and you can tell me if i'm wrong that you're brigadier general yeah yeah <laughs> nice to meet you sir nice to meet you sir. <laughs> like, um could you just describe a little bit as much as you can like, how long have you been in the armed forces for to start with Sorry. How long have you been a, a soldier for? Uh, no, actually, I'm uh, 27 years 27 in the years. army, yeah. and exactly in this land, uh, I'm uh, I 10 years uh, here, uh, from uh, 2014. Yeah. Uh, exactly started here, and uh, uh, we uh, reoccupied our territory uh, around Lugansk and so on. Wow. So I'm fighting here 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So you've seen. The Russians invade Ukraine since the very beginning. Yep. And what do you feel about the the war now and actually Ukraine being on the offensive into Russian territory? No, actually, you can see that uh, uh, fighting on the battlefield changing yeah. every day. Uh, I can compare it from 2014 until uh, nowadays. Uh, so. Uh, Yes, we uh, started uh, more experienced, uh, so now we can uh, make not just uh, defense operation, mm -hmm. also offensive operations, and even in Russian territory. Yeah. So I hope we will make some safe uh, stripe uh, um, near our border and can uh, stop uh, Russian rocket strikes to our territory and we can save our civilians from these strikes. Yes. And I think, you know, the, the, the OPSEC around that operation was amazing, and it still is. Um, but from what we can see in the public, which is mostly from Russian Telegram, Ukraine seems to be doing amazing job, but also using Western equipment, like from my country. But it's yep. now got the opportunity to be able to actually move around without the problems of the vast minefields. And they seem to be operating everything incredibly well like for you and in the jobs that you've done in the army it must be hard to integrate lots of different weapon capabilities together yeah yeah i agree with you yeah. uh, actually uh, we have some joke that uh, we have uh, uh, nato different types of equipment and armory wow. uh, much more than even nato has yeah uh, so uh, but we have um, uh, strong uh, and uh, very clever uh, technicians yeah. uh, and of course uh, they uh, have good communication with you uh, no, these technicians from different countries especially yeah. who produce them uh, they have uh, as a straight lines these producers yeah. uh, uh, they have uh, lots of meet meetings and so on mm. uh, and uh, they give us instructions uh, documentations and so on it helps us for uh, better uh, how to better use this equipment and uh, armory. Uh, thank you for all countries. Yeah. So it's, it's a pleasure. I think most countries in the world, certainly Britain and Estonia, you know, recognize that this is all of our fight and that it's a very clear evil versus good and democracy needs to win and Ukraine needs to win. Yeah, sure. But, in, um, but when it comes to weapon capabilities, Mm -hmm. Ukraine is also, in many ways, becoming a world leader 
in new defence team. But also, I, I think in, in your career so far, you've been responsible for artillery, so you've seen the, the, the bringing to the battlefield of things like the Bogdana, etc. Yes. Like, yes. How, like how does, how does like the Ukrainian system like that compare to some of the Western ones that you were given? Mm -hmm. No, actually, uh, fortunately, uh, they could uh, create uh, new self-propelled how, uh, yeah. how is there's Bogdana, yeah. uh, and uh, they have good results as uh, the number uh, of guns how we can um, produce uh, uh, not enough, but uh, as a um, comparable mm. amount. And uh, of course, quality of this gun is uh, very good. Mm. Uh, so they use actively on the forward line them. Yeah. And uh, no, actually all countries now uh, try to uh, have only one artillery caliber, 155 millimeters. Yeah. Uh, so uh, after this war, we also can make and have only one caliber and uh, uh, to make easy our logistics, military logistics and so on. Uh, but uh, until the end of this war, of course, we need all systems of artillery systems, of course, ammunition for them, uh, because we are spending uh, too much. No, uh, now, actually, you can see that Russians also use Chinese equipment, yeah. uh, North Korea uh, rockets yeah. and so on. Uh, so, in, uh, in nowadays, uh, this war uh, even bigger uh, as a conflict of two countries. Uh, and nowadays it's conflict, uh, maybe some unions and some forms of uh, democracy and autocracy and so on. Yeah, that's like we're fighting a, a new axis of evil. Yeah. Do you see the future for Ukraine having a strong defense industry where it will not only export the equipment it's developed to protect itself in this war, but also people like yourself and you know, the, the, the troops are incredibly experienced guys now that NATO armies around the world can learn from. Uh, yes, and nowadays, of course, we are trying to uh, make new uh, manufacturing. Yeah. We have communication with producers yeah. and uh, try to uh, take uh, some equipment, some technologies, and uh, start. Uh, will start to produce this uh, uh, armory in Ukrainian territory. Uh, we are clearly understanding that uh, in forward uh, uh, future we will be as a, uh, we can call it maybe as a border between. Uh, uh, Europe and uh, yeah. uh, dead uh, lands as Russia. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not really a country, is it? The other place. Yeah. <laughs> Do you um, see so twenty-seven year career? Like how, in in Ukrainian military normally, like how long is a career until until you get to retire? Yeah. Well, actually, after twenty-five years. Twenty-five. Then, yeah, you can be retired right. and have good pension and so, just. Fish and hunting and so on. So you're into overtime now then, basically? Uh, no, we're, uh, <laughs> we are just hunting. It's also, uh, we have the best uh, work in the world yeah. as a military man. But if you, when, once you've won the war, what do you want to do? If you, were, if you weren't fighting, what do you enjoy doing? After fighting? Yeah. Well, uh, I think we will start uh, rebuild our country of course uh, first, of, first of all it's uh, it's a lot of uh, um, a lot of work and um, capacity of work uh, of course we need to uh, improve and develop our um, infrastructure mm. and so on mm. well, and uh, uh, as a military man mm. uh, we are ready to make uh, ah, to take part uh, this uh, in another operation with nato somewhere in the Taiwan and so on <laughs> yeah, to yeah, help in other countries to have, to make peace quite so would you would that be interesting to you then to to be able to like continue and to work with them in future on other yep. operations sure. part of joint training exercises all those sort of things yes sure yeah yeah interesting interesting and have you ever have you had a chance ever to come to the uk or, or estonia where the charities founded before uh, no i, I had a uh, chance i've been in estonia yeah. and uh, i've been in uh, in the uk also yeah. but it's just as uh, military tourism military tourism. you must be looking forward to a holiday at some point then no unfortunately yeah. i was very busy yeah. uh, just uh, <laughs> out of plane uh, make some meetings and yeah. so on and back to Ukraine. So h how important are things like these trucks that we do in this charity? Because you know, we get 
a lot of money donated from people around the world mm -hmm. that support Ukraine. And what we see from lots of different military units is they can, they'll be given you know, weapons, other capabilities, mm -hmm. but trucks are always needed. Is that, is that the same for the units that you command? No, you, you can see uh, they have had uh, uh, as, uh, hmm. Situation when they uh, when they use these trucks, yeah. so uh, it's uh, civilian trucks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they start uh, they use them on the field uh, roads and battle roads. Uh, they start asphalt and so on. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard conditions for uh, their exploitation, mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, they have much shorter period of time than they can use them. Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually even uh, the enemy tried to hit them by FPV drones and so on. Yeah. Uh, so for uh, faster moving, for um, maybe sometimes more comfortable, especially with such conditions, uh, yes, uh, they need uh, trucks, vans and so on, especially when we try to make uh, uh, much more um, as uh, uh, drone crews, mm -hmm. they need vans. Uh, for commanders, uh, not just for commanders, also for anti-tank uh, uh, crews, also they need as uh, jeeps yeah. and so on. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, they need them um, much more than they have. Uh, I hope maybe then they will start produce our own cars. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. They can make it. We've just actually started to make uh, drone. Uh, trucks basically for reconnaissance drones so people using mm -hmm. like Leleka or shark mm -hmm. and we we fit the inside of it out mm -hmm. so and you know jammers as well when we first started delivering um pickups drones were there but it's moved so quickly the use of fpv drones if i think like i was in this area like this time last year and the use of that drone technology has moved so fast in just 12 months and 12 months before. Like, what do you think is going to be the future of like unmanned war? Well, actually, uh, my opinion exactly, yeah. uh, that's uh, uh, the war in uh, Ukraine uh, in, in our territory is just beginning yeah. before uh, Third World War. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe uh, I can compare it with this uh, uh, Vietnam War, yeah. then uh, the USA started use uh, airborne uh, divisions, it was also the first time. In our war, uh, we started to use drones yeah. uh, and robots, uh, so uh, the end of this conflict will be also completely different, and maybe even we don't need armory, we just need robots and uh, drones. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, such weapon as electronic warfare mm -hmm. uh, against uh, this uh, uh, drones it's also uh, should uh, develop very fast yeah. as, uh, because they also have competition yeah drones changing electronic warfare changing yeah and uh, if they don't have a big uh, break between them uh, it will be good so you think or see this as being the beginning of a bigger conflict yes rather than the last one yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we see it yeah and using robots so at the moment we have entrenched positions which is very dangerous for men to be yes do you see a future where we essentially have a line of unmanned systems ugvs you know uas and then the men further back on each side and robots are trying to breach a front line is it like that type of thing uh, no. it's yes yeah. it's a wonderful form yeah. of uh, this uh, fighting yeah. It can be, why not? Uh, just every soldier uh, for today, maybe um, instead of 10 uh, human soldiers, to have one robot who can make uh, this job. Of course, yeah, because human life is, is sacred and it takes a lot of time to train a soldier, doesn't yes. it? And it's... What, um, I always ask this question to, because you've been a fighting man your whole life and, and in the course of delivering these trucks, I've met amazing Ukrainian men, like some that only signed up to fight two years ago and before they worked in IT mm -hmm. or marketing mm -hmm. and now they are you know, proven combat hardened soldiers, for mm -hmm. example. Um, but there are also men that haven't fought to defend their country. 
mm -hmm. but are still here enjoying it, almost like there's not a war going on. Mm -hmm. I find that quite strange sometimes. Like, does that, do you find that difficult as like a man that's fought for Ukraine your whole career and now Ukraine is facing a, you know, a, a strong enemy and there yeah. are some people not willing to defend Ukraine and to risk their lives. You know, what? No, actually, every country has the same problems. Yeah. Then, uh, and we cannot say that, uh, uh, no, then you have, uh, uh, you take part in some foreign com military campaigns. Yeah. Of course, there uh, will come uh, regular army. But uh, then you will have problem uh, military war or military conflict in your territory. Uh, whole nation should fight. Uh, so they should prepare for it. And uh, everybody, even IT specialist or uh, another person should be ready for fighting and defend their country. Uh, maybe not just this uh, rifle in the trench. Mm. Um, you know, as an IT specialist, you can be Mm, uh, you take part in uh, cyber operations and so on. So, uh, army has a lot of posts and we will find places for everybody. And we have places for everybody. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think it scares people though. Like, I mean, and by that I mean, they did a, um, like a, a poll. They asked uh, men under 30 in the UK you know, if there was a war in in that involved the uk and someone invaded what would you do and i think over 70 percent of the people said they would try and run away like there it's uh, it's like there is a uh, people are uh, are different now like generations change if that makes sense uh, no actually uh, maybe you don't know but uh, uh, in any, every country, diplomacy, economy, uh, economists, uh, they are working uh, how to defend their country. Yeah. And if uh, economically a uh, country is strong, uh, nobody uh, will try to uh, catch it or yeah. invade. Uh, because a strong country has strong army uh, with new technologies and so on, enough mm -hmm. resources. Uh, actually, uh, uh, nobody has enough resources, unfortunately, for fighting. But uh, when we can uh, receive them from our friends uh, and so on, we can fight. Oh, but I think that in this war has been interesting for Western armies and NATO because in some instances it's the first time their equipment has faced Russian or you know, electronic warfare. And in some instances we're finding that our expensive equipment isn't as effective <laughs> against the the army that it was um, developed to be used against. Uh, sure, yeah. uh, we are open for our friends, yeah. and uh, we are, uh, we are giving always feedback yeah. for our yeah. partners uh, and uh, how to improve this weapon, how uh, to use it better, and uh, in what conditions yeah. uh, better to use it. So don't worry, we have good communications with everybody. It's good, and I, I hope the. Uh, that collaboration continues, you know, because it's important that my country and Europe and the West of the world and America doesn't get tired mm -hmm. of, of this. Um, and it's, it's been a, a difficult 12 months in maybe the war here, but also politically around the world. You know, as we're coming up with the American elections, we've had about four different prime ministers almost since you started, <laughs> since the Russians full scale invasion. But yeah. for Europe and the USA, much more dangerous if uh, we will lose. Of course, for our uh, country it will be uh, as a crash, yeah. but uh, Russians can use, uh, in this case, uh, Russians uh, can use our resources and resources of our country to uh, re-empower their army. And who will stop after that uh, or will want to fight against them? I think that's quite a scary outcome if that was no yeah. why are we mm. always uh, asking about the weapon and so on mm. because uh, now uh, of course we are defending first of all our country but also uh, this our as uh, democracy and freedom we also uh, try to protect uh, european values thank you thank you thank you thank you yeah thank you alex if you were to have one message right to so the people that watch this video and then 
donate money to our charity so we can deliver more military equipment and and obviously the orcs must die mm -hmm. like, <laughs> what can you say to everyone that's watching this in terms of keeping them inspired to help ukraine well, first of all i want to, to say uh, thank you uh, from uh, m uh, me from my troops uh, for helping uh, us these uh, cars and uh, uh, let's kill more russians <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 Hello.